and welcome to the Aspen Shed again. Uh, I think this is going to be the final bit of the diesel engine build. I've lost more video with the other camera, I don't know what's going on with it. It records for so long and then uh, you come and switch it on the next time and it says there's something wrong with the SD card and do I want to fix it and it just corrupts all the files that are on the card so I've lost a lot, I've lost more today. Anyway, the engine <coughs> is now finished. It was finished a couple of days ago, <coughs> but when I come to try and run it, again I had no compression uh, and it wouldn't run. It just made horrible black m m smoke and nothing. I couldn't get it to run. So <coughs> I uh, got stuck in again and I uh, started again with the, piston, with the piston and cylinder. The cylinder I just put a reamer through again and just took a shaving out of it. But what I did do that I hadn't done before properly was I made a mandrel to fit the cylinder and I put slits in it and I used um, diamond paste 2400 grit well I, start, I started with uh, 3000 and then I went to 8000 or something and then 24000 grit and I uh, I lapped it, I lapped the cylinder with this brass mandrel I made for quite some time and, <clears throat> and I finished up using um, Solval Autosol, <clears throat> good old Autosol, Solval Autosol that as a kid we used to use on the crankcases of the Triumphs and the Nortons and the Beezers to polish them up. Brilliant stuff. So it, it, it is a polish, it is abrasive but very very fine. And I finished up using that on the mandrel <coughs> to get what looked like, looking through looking through the cylinder, uh, it, it looked a, a, a lot smoother than I ever had before. It got a bit of a, a glass look to it. So then I went on and remade the piston. <coughs> And gradually brought it down to size. I've lost all the video of it so I'm just telling you. Um, gradually brought it down to size and I finished up bringing it close to size using one of these. This is a diamond coated plate, a diamond stone and it's 1200 grit. Uh, I brought it down a bit bit closer to the finishing diameter than I wanted uh, but there was still enough left for me to use the diamond stone and again the diamond paste and I applied it using the back of this uh, this um, uh, metal stone to keep it uh, flat and I applied it and finished up again with Solval Autosol until I got it that the cylinder was slide the piston was sliding in about two thirds into the cylinder uh, quite smoothly and then tightening up. So after that I thought it's time now to um, part it off and I uh, counterboard it uh, and uh, drilled it for the gudgeon pin and assembled the engine again and I could only get like that much rotation easily but I kept on at it and putting oil in for quite some time until eventually it did do a full rotation as you can see the engine is quite free now that's probably because this engine is built with uh, ball races on the crankshaft uh, and it has got compression uh, 
and it's getting better every time I run it. I put the carburetor on off the old one. It was exactly the same dimensions as for this one. And uh, as you can see in the last, I don't know if I'm going to put the <coughs> put the picture of it running before or after the, this bit of video, but you'll see it running. So I think that oh, and we had fun and games making the uh, compression screw. I made a complete rick of that. I had to remake it. The drilling of the hole. Um, it's obvious now, but obviously the first thing you do is drill the hole and then machine the rest of it. I machined it all up and left the hole drill into the end. Well, it got nothing to hold it by, and it just wandered off and was a complete mess. Anyway, uh, I think that's all the exciting bits that happened. It's uh, all gone together now, it looks quite tidy and uh, runs. What the next project is going to be, I don't know. But I think the difference between my channel and the likes of um, Keith Fenner and uh, A Bomb and uh, uh, Double Boost is when they do videos, they work from, they do jobs and they all fin finish and they never make any mistakes but this has got to be a complete opposite as far as I was concerned because if I'd have been able to show all the videos I've got I had hours of me making terrible mistakes <laughs> mistake a day I think the main thing is the reason I make mistakes is a I'm not a machinist I don't purport to be a machinist I'm just a hobbyist I've ne never made an internal combustion engine before. Well, I have. This is my second, but the first, the first one was no great shakes. Uh, similar pattern, except this one didn't have the ball races. So it come from the same stable. It's the Ball Aero, and I put a link in my description every time. And this is the uprated one. Uh, when you don't know what you're doing it is all trial and error so you do what you think is right and then you learn by that and you make it again so in the end I have finished up with quite a good engine I'm pleased with it for once it uh, it runs a treat so uh, I'll call it quits now so until the next job uh, please like, dislike, subscribe, it all helps. And so I'll say until the next time, bye for now. Right, <coughs> set her up and uh, I'll just prime her. And I've got a little electric starter here, because we're just running her in. Uh, a little tank of fuel. successful conclusion she runs well <laughs>